Hello, welcome to this lesson of the Laplace Transform Tutor. Here we're going to continue working some problems, getting practice with this. So first let's look at taking the Laplace Transform of 3 minus e to the minus 3t plus 5 times the sine of 2t and close that off like that. So again, we have three terms, linear combination of three terms, each one we know how to deal with, so let's apply it in sequence. Now, to make it a little bit more clear, before we start applying the actual transform rules, let's rewrite it. This is gonna be basically three times the Laplace transform of one. Make sure you understand that, because three times one is three, so you can almost like pull the three out and Laplace transform what's left, which is just one. Um, this guy will be a minus sign, and then you'll have Laplace transform of e to the minus 3t, and then this will be a 5 times the Laplace transform of sine 2t. All right, so that's basically what we're doing, and this kind of helps us keep track of what we're, uh, what we're actually transforming and what we're actually doing. Well, this one here is going to be 3 times the Laplace transform of 1. We've looked many times as just 1 over s. You'll end up memorizing that after a while. We have a minus sign. Laplace transform e to the minus 3t fits with this mold, but the only difference is the lambda at the top is negative 3. Negative 3. So when you use it down here, it's s minus negative 3. So my advice is the way you should write that is s minus negative 3. I know that you all know that this is positive 3, but if you put a plus here, then going back and checking your work, you're not going to know what you did. This way, it's s minus whatever was in the exponent. We'll deal with the signs later. Then we have a 5 times Laplace of sine of 2t, which is this. So it's 2 over s squared plus 2 squared. So what we're going to have is 2 over s squared plus 2 squared. Again, I know that you know that 2 squared is 4, um, but you don't want to do too many things at one time. Uh, so the answer is going to be f of s here will be 3 over s minus 1 over s plus 3 plus 10 over s squared plus 4. 5 times 2 is 10. This is the answer. 3 over s minus s, or I should say 1 over s plus 3 plus uh, 10 over s squared plus 4. So that's the Laplace transform. Again, just working on each thing in sequence. All right, so let's go and work another one down below here. Uh, if we have a function of time, 3 plus 12t plus 42t cubed minus 3e to the 2t, like this. 3 plus 12t plus 42t cubed minus 3e to the 2t. Again, four terms, each linked by a plus, but we know how to deal with each one separately. So rather than just throw it all on the paper, let's take it one step at a time and look at each, each little guy here. So what we can say then is the Laplace transform of f of t is equal to, what would be the Laplace transform of 3? I think you can convince yourself it's going to be 3 times 1 over s because it's like 3 times 1. We've done it before. Laplace transform of 1 is just 1 over s. Then we have 12t. So the 12 is going to just come out, but Laplace transform of t to the first power is 1 factorial, which is 1, s to the 1 plus 1. So what we're going to have then is, just to keep it straight, we'll put 1 factorial over s to the 1 plus 1. Again, I know that you know what 1 factorial is, but putting this here, as you go back in and check your work, is going to remind you what you were doing. Okay, I was applying the Laplace transform, I plugged everything in correctly. Here, it's going to be 42 times Laplace transform of t cubed. So again, n would be 3, 3 factorial s to the 3 plus 1. So it would be 3 factorial s to the 3 plus 1, minus sign from here. And then we have 3 Laplace transform e to the 2t, where lambda is 2, 1 over s minus 2. Like this. So at the end of the day, the Laplace transform as a function of s, actually let me, yeah, just leave it like that, is going to be 3 over s plus 12 times 1 is just 12 over s squared, 
42 times 3 factorial is just going to be 252 over s to the fourth power here, minus 3 over s minus 2. Minus 3 over s minus 2. So 3 over s plus 12 over s squared plus 252 over s to the fourth minus 3 over s minus 2. This is the final answer. Let me see if I can fit one more on this guy, on this page. And that's going to be, actually, we'll just do it over here. It'll be easy enough. We'll just do it here and then I'll erase it when, I'm, when we're done. Just to give us a little more room. F of t is equal to t plus 1 times t plus 2. All right? So we don't know how to do Laplace transforms of products like this, but what we do know is we can expand this into a polynomial and we know how to handle all the terms in the polynomial. So let's do that. So what you're going to have is t times t is t squared. The inside terms will give you t. The outside terms will give you 2t. And then the last terms, 2 times 1, would give me 2. So f of t, really, when you rewrite it, is t squared plus 3t plus 2. And what we seek to do is take the Laplace transform of that. So we'll say Laplace transform of f of t equals t squared will go up here where this is 2. So it would be 2 factorial s to the 2 plus 1. So we'll say 2 factorial s to the 2 plus 1. Right? That's the first term. And then we have 3 times the Laplace transform of t, which again, uh, here the power would be 1. So it would be 1 factorial over s squared. So it would be 1 factorial s1 plus 1 is how we'll write it for now. And then the last thing is a Laplace transform of 2, but we've done this enough where we know it's 2 times 1 over s because, or 2 over s, however you want to write it, uh, because taking the Laplace transform of a constant is just going to put the s down, down below it. So then we can write the final answer. f of s is equal to, this reduces to 2, s cubed on the bottom, 3 times 1 factorial is just 3 over s squared. And this is 2 over s. So we get 2 over s cubed plus 3 over s squared plus 2 over s. So I think you can agree that none of these are particularly hard. You know, uh, I could have really just started the course by just giving you this table and teaching kind of how to do it. I wanted to do some derivations to show you where everything's coming from, to enrich you, also prepare you for lots of exams and homeworks and things where you have to be more rigorous. But really, these are the kind of problems that you're going to get into more often than not. When you have a polynomial that includes, you know, uh, powers of t, and then you have a sine and a cosine, and we'll learn some other Laplace transforms as we go through the course, but basically you got these building block functions that now we know how to do this, we can get transforms of really the lion's share of what we're going to need to do. Now what we need to do is go on to the next section. We have, at this point, gotten pretty good at taking basic Laplace transforms. Now let's go and learn and focus on how to take inverse transforms, going the other direction. What if you're looking at this and you need to make your way backwards to get to something like this? It's all doable. It's all basically going to be using this table that we have along with our skills. Let's master that and then we'll figure out that we can use these skills to solve differential equations and other problems in science and engineering.